Hey, Ariel. Hey. So it's been almost a year since our last video. I know, it's so crazy. How have you been? What's been going on since since that day? Um, a lot, actually. Um, I don't even know where to start, really. Um, a lot of good and bad has happened since then. Um, you know, painful experiences that I've had to go through, but have led me to the point that I'm at now, um, where I finally feel like I'm ready to change. Um, I got signed up for a rehab, so I'm pretty excited about that. I just, I, I hope that I'm able to continue on this road and just be self, you know, self-resilient and have faith. Most of all, have faith because by myself, I'm, I don't feel like I'm strong enough. Like I, I like to believe that I am and that I'm able to be self-sufficient and independent but at the end of the day when I'm you know alone and bawling my eyes out feeling like giving up I'm usually by myself and you know can't do it alone so you mean faith in a higher power um it could be a higher power just just having faith in general in you know your existence and and whatever you want to achieve it like for me my mom always told me that i had potential and like that whatever i set my mind to i get i'm, I'm very determined when it comes down to it and when i want something bad enough I'll, by any means i'll i'll get I'll get to that point or get what I want, you know. Um, I think I just have to put that into what I'm going through right now and, and you know, into my recovery. So at the end of the day, it's not an overnight process. I didn't get here overnight, you know. Um, this is years in the making, so I'm, I'm pretty much going to be in diapers, you know, in, in recovery terms but um yeah I I'm I'm looking forward to it you know I don't have any bad thoughts about the future and what it holds so I don't think either of us really expected the video to blow up kind of blow up I didn't either it's crazy I was thinking about that earlier like when I ran into you you know and we met and everything transpired into what it did. Um, I, I never thought that I would, you know, go public with my story like that or um, when I did because, you know, I'm still, you know, fresh, you know, in terms of everything that's been going on and just life in general. But it blew my mind because I really wasn't expecting how much support I was gonna gain from it. And that support really pushed me forward. Like it helped me to know that one, I'm not alone. And you know, people can relate to my story. And you know, actually like it made me feel really good because it, allow me to realize that I'm helping other people too at the same time as I'm helping myself. And you're one of the few people that after the day of the interview, I never saw again until like a week yeah. ago. Yeah, like I said, a lot has happened, you know. Um, I had been in a really toxic relationship. Um, I'm not gonna mention his name, but uh, it got to the point where, you know, we, we were both addicts and two addicts are not a good combination. And we just 
fueled each other's fire. Like, every time he wanted to get high, I would, you know, create the means to either go out and get it for him or with him and the same, you know, on the other end too with me. And we was, we was just living in really bad environments you know, staying in bandos and um, uh, abandoned abandoned houses. But um, yeah, just like I, I I wasn't taking care of myself at all. Like I usually, you know, like not usually, but I like to stay fresh. You know, I shower on a daily basis. You know, change my clothes and you know do do my daily hygiene because that's what makes me feel good you know uh, I think it's important just because I'm on the streets doesn't mean that I should you know lack on taking care of myself in those type of ways but I saw that after I got with this guy I started falling back on all of that like I was dirty and like my clothes were dirty like I wouldn't change my clothes like and just just little things like I noticed it's like I I wasn't I was caring less and less about myself so anyways it got to a point where our addiction well yeah our addiction and mainly his addiction was running us like into the ground and what were the substances you guys were using? Crack and Molly. He was he was using more crack. I was mainly using Molly, but I was still smoking crack with him too. No opiates. No opiates. No. Um but there was there was a point where we had gotten into a argument on the train back over here from one of our little boosting miss missions and um we we pretty much was about to go our separate ways and i had spotted a bag of fentanyl on the ground in the train picked it up he said he you know he took all the stuff that we had ended up stealing going to get the money for it and just leaving me where I was. So I was so, I was so hurt and upset and just like, I wanted to die. And I, I snorted the whole bag of fet fentanyl. I overdosed. They had to give me two things of Narcan. And um, eventually I woke up sick as a dog. But um, yeah. I, I never would have expected all that to bring me to that point because I'm not a suicidal person. So it's like he, he wasn't a healthy person that I should have been with at all. He didn't care if I lived or died. You know, even though he said all the time that he did, it was clear as day that he didn't, you know, through his actions. Um, a little bit, like maybe a few weeks after that whole incident with the fentanyl, it got really bad where I was more chill on my supply of drugs. You know, like if, if I had enough money to get a certain amount and I ran through it, I could chill and, you know, like do other things to keep me busy, I wasn't stuck on, I have to get high, I have to get high, I have to get high. But he was, like, it, to a point where he was pushing me to go to stores and, you know, we was doing that literally all the time. So, um, you know, we went to the beach, we got in a situation where we went into a store and I took the merchandise. He, you know, he 
pulled a knife on the guy that was chasing after me and we both got an armed robbery. So, you know, I, I'm still dealing with that, but through me going to the program and, you know, changing my life around, all that's gonna get taken care of. It's just, you know, I, I can't ever forget, you know, and there's certain things that he's done that he really, he's literally put my life in danger. Besides that, he's put my life in danger, like actually done that. And for someone who at a point I thought really did care about me, it was the exact opposite. It was like to find out what kind of person he was underneath all that and he was trying to fake to be a different, you know, version of himself. It just, it like, you know, it kind of shattered my, shattered my like um, perception of people and relationships. Like, you know, cause I still, e even though I've gone through what I've gone through, I still try to have like, you know, hope that there's something different out in the world, that there's, you know, People that are, that don't act that way, that actually care and actually show love and support and those type of things. You know, I don't want to completely give up on certain ideas of, you know, having that in my life. But it really got me to a point where I was just like hopeless, you know? I thought I loved him, but Sitting those six months in jail, I really, like, I had nothing but time to think about everything that happened, and I can't, I, I, it's, it's impossible for me to really have love for a person who is willing to end my life, you know, for their own benefit, and it's like, I, I can't truly have love for someone like that because I know at the end of the day, my heart is pure. I don't have an evil heart. You know, I, I wouldn't go out of my way and try to harm someone like that or like do do things to put them in danger. I, I'm, I'm usually the one that wants to help or like, you know, if I see someone who who's in the same type of situation or a similar situation, I wanna do what I can to make sure they're straight because I know that even though this this world is how it is, I want that in return, you know? Have you ever been in love, like true love, you think? Yeah, yeah. Um. I was I was in a relationship with um what what did, what did you say his name is J Rock you know um people call him One Thousand but it was like a puppy love it was like my first experience of what love was and it it gave me like a warm feeling inside. I didn't, I didn't think, like, like two, two people could be, like, so compatible and alike, but, um, but yeah, you know, I miss him a lot, actually. He, um, he's been in prison for the past three years. He doesn't get out until 2030. Is that why you guys had to split up? Because he's... Alike? I mean... I don't think we ever really split up, to be honest. He's one of those people that I, our bond will never break. Like, no matter what, whenever we're around each other, it's just like we take off from where we left off at. Like, it's like like he, he or I never like parted ways. That I've I've already you know I've had this conversation with him too. Like I. I can't accept that because I already told him how painful it is to not have him around. 
you know, only be able to contact him through phone calls and letters. It's not enough. Like, um, it's not enough for me, especially like, you know, when he's, he's supposed to be like, you know, going, going through life with me. So if he gets out and he just does the same thing, it's not, it's not gonna float my boat, you know. I, the only way I see that going anywhere is if we were to make a, you know, a combined effort and decision to move, to move to a completely different area, both get jobs and start a family and do things different where we're not in this type of fast life uh, fast lifestyle like hustling and I'm not saying hustling is bad but the way you go about it is everything you know and I know with him he's he's a hothead he he just like you know it's always getting into shit. <laughs> so, it, you know, I I care about him a lot. I do. Even even if we were to to not work out as a couple, I know that I'd always care about him as a human being. Like I there there it's only right. There's no other way because it's like he's been there at really vital times that, you know, other people weren't like I have his name on me. Like he has he has my name on him too. Like it's just that that's how it is. It it uh oh. So you wanna leave this life behind completely? I do. Before whether I thought it was possible or not, like I would I just didn't want it. Like, you know, I was just like stuck in rebelling stuck in my ways and I didn't want to change but now it's like a lot of factors are coming into motion and I'm seeing it as a possibility and you know like especially the support I'm getting through these interviews is just like you know is doing a lot of good in my mind because it's like I really didn't think I was gonna see so much positive come from it like it's a lot it, it, it it's a lot to take in you know because I just I wasn't going into the video you know wanting really anything from it I just something was telling me that oh you need like you need to go do this like I, I get I, I don't know I, I, I feel like they they're like that's so raven moments where I'm just like I daze out and then I'm like, yeah, you need to do that. Like, it was just one of those where I, you know, I went with it. But I'm really glad that I did because, you know, I don't think I'd be at the point I am right now if I hadn't. Has anyone ever recognized you from the video? Yeah, actually, there was one, uh, one girl who was like, oh, that's you from the video. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe, like, hey, like, I'm running into people who've actually seen it, it's just, like... You talked about some things coming into motion, what are those things? Well, I'm, I'm working on a few projects right now. Um, first, I'm, I'm working on a song, it's dedicated to my grandpa, um, passed away from cancer recently, um... But I, I've, I've come to terms with it to a point where I feel like he's still, his spirit is still around. Oh, his spirit is still watching over me. Um, because certain things happen and I'm like, that's him. But it was really hard to, when he first died, that was, really the last real conversation I had with my mom, the last time I talked to her, was when she told me 
he had cancer and he passed away. After that, I started smoking crack and everything went downhill. I didn't. I don't think I really mentioned that in the first video, but um, it it really like it was hard for me because my grandpa. First of all, he's not my blood, not my blood grandpa. He was married into the family, and he showed me the most the most um, support out of any single one of my family members. Like when I was pregnant, he. All, all, all the rest of my relatives, like, you know, shunned me. They didn't want me around. And he made sure to, like, come see me every day, made sure a roof was over my head and I ate, you know. And, like, the thing I miss the most about him is he was the one person I could talk to about literally anything didn't matter what it was and he'd give me the best advice you know um and he listened and he wouldn't judge me like i i'm not saying that like you know there are other people like that but he he you could tell that he was really an angel like sent that's how that's how i really look at him now so i feel like to a point yeah like I'm doing this for myself, like writing this song for myself. But since since I never, you know, got any clo real closure with him dying, I feel like it'll bring that. And I just I just hope at the end of the day that he he's like you know looking upon me and is proud of what I'm doing because. You know, if I if I never got to show him when he was alive, I you know I just hope that I'm making him proud now. I've I've written the uh, first half of the song, but I still need the other half, and I still have to you know edit it before I make any movement on it. But I it's called it's called silence. So when it does come out, just Check it out. That, that would be appreciated. Are you gonna start a YouTube channel or something like that? I would love to actually. I, I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, I I've been going back and forth because I feel like it'd be cool to kind of log my journey of recovery when I go into the program. You know, like so people can see that it's actually possible. You know, and to keep myself accountable too. Like. That's, that's, those are the things I want to remember. You know, I want to remember the fun times where I feel high without getting high, you know, because I spent my days constantly just being numb. That that's all, that's all that really felt normal to me. And is that what you want to do with your life is make music? Um, I mean, it's one of the things I have, I have a lot of, I have a lot of things that I plan on doing. Um, I've also been working on a book. Um, one of which is, it's short stories, but I, you know, I, I like meeting people too. Um, I'm, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm very like sociable, like uh, I'm a social butterfly. I, I just, you know, it's cool to me just meeting different people and just like hearing people's stories so um i thought it was a cool idea to go anonymous and go strike people's you know whatever events they they feel like sharing with me it it doesn't all have to be bad or good like it's whatever whatever i find you know interesting to put into the book and so like people can see like a realer version of people you know like uncut and and uncensored like they can just like experience something else while they're reading it um and then the other book that I'm working on too is about about myself but in a version of 
an urban book. Um, if you don't know what urban books are, they're very popular in jails and prisons. And that's a big reason why I'm venturing, you know, toward, toward uh, this idea is because like, I want, w once it finally does get published, I, I want to donate a portion to, you know, the people who are incarcerated in the um, jails and institutions. Cause for one, they, there's certain things that me being locked up, I, I would like to, to put forward, forth and, and change because I, I think it's better to always leave the world you know, better than it was before, or as much as you possibly can, you know. Um, so yeah, it's 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 gonna be in third person, but it's gonna like, you know, it, it, it's gonna kind of be a twist, you know, on, on more, like, more that I haven't revealed, so. I saw you had a notebook with you with a lot of-, with a <laughs> lot the, of That raggedy thing. <laughs> With a lot of writing in it. Yeah, it's, it's it's very it's very torn up. Do you but, um, uh, yeah, I, I wrote a little portion of a little snippet of what um you know what you can expect. This is something from my life, but um all right. I always had this idea as a jit. So a jit is a kid, if you don't know, that I wanted my life to play out like a fairy tale but it ended up being anything but. If there was any close comparison, I would say it would rather be a close call to Grimm's brother version of how fairy, fairy tales really have taken place. I realize denial has been easy to maintain throughout the years because it goes hand in hand with being known. A fairy tale gets so misinterpreted in the real world my world was turned upside down during the most vital periods of time in my life when the necessities in order to grow were not to my access i didn't feel safe at home and a home is the one place you should feel the most security i followed in the footsteps of my mother and ended up in the hands of a wolf in sheep's clothing the only option in my mind i saw as viable was resorting to actions of fight or flight not only did the rabbit hole of Ariel's Wonderland drop so deep that it pushed me into physical harm to the woman that birthed me, it also pushed me right into the hands of a person who robbed me of any semblance of innocence I had left. This is my recollection of the events that took place during the days, which took me to the point of no return. There's no turning back when you make split se second decisions on impulse. Without the proper thought process of right and wrong, my mind was not yet developed and still malleable. But anyways, let me take you to a time when a lot of things were different. And it all started with a volleyball summer camp in the most unlikely places in Long Beach, California. They both had never seen it coming. And then, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta leave it at that because Cliffhanger. Yeah. That's gonna be such a great book. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a keep I'm gonna keep everybody posted though, because I do I do plan on making my own uh YouTube channel. You know, I at least at the very least to um you know, show my journey. Show show like, you know, I, I'm gonna be writing obviously during during that whole period of time, but you know, um if it is possible, I, I would like to, I would like to record some of it too. I like, I like writing, but I feel like music is what I'm most passionate about. I feel like, you know, that's something that's, that's something that's going to be big in my life because music keeps me sane. Like it, it really does. Like I listen to music on a daily basis and the writing alone helps me too because I really, I go off, you know, I go off and venture out by myself and find a, a spot that's quiet and just get my thoughts out in a healthy way. And it's like that, that saves me from, it saves me from, you know, going, do, going, going down the deep end. 
I listen to all, I, I listen to pretty much a little bit of everything, maybe besides the country and, you know, um, religious music, but other than that, you know, I like listening to old R&B, a lot of rap, some rock, you know, because my dad would always play uh, rock in his pickup truck, driving me to work, uh, driving driving me to school and him going to work. Um, but I, I think I vibe most with, you know, um, R&B and rap. But my favorite artist right now is most likely gonna be Little Dirt, cause he just like you know he's he's very real, he's very uncut. Like um, I just vibe with a lot of what he says because I I've gone through a lot of what he talks about in his music and it's just real life shit. It's people are going through you know and a, a lot of people these days don't get into that. They just want to rhyme and create a fancy beat or tune and and what is that doing for the world like 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 I'm doing in this video like people need to relate because that saves lives you know you like you never know what a person is going through and whatever what they read or listen to or hear you know like that may change their whole perspective I can't tell you how many times I've heard a song that just completely blew your mind, like blew like, my mind yeah. and, and and almost like changed how I thought. Like, right. You know, are you still using today? Like, are you still using drugs? Um, yeah, I am. I've cut out the crack. I've cut out the crack completely. Um, I haven't smoked for. A few weeks now so like two and a half weeks straight and um I stole my pipe I broke the other one you know I I just I I didn't I I didn't want any what's the word I, I didn't want any uh, reservations you know I didn't want it to be there and then feel like oh okay like you know I have a means to do this but at the same time it's just it's becoming less and less beautified in my brain it, it's the for one yeah for well I know I'm right now I'm talking specifically about crack I, I, I spent way too much money on it you know it deteriorated my body like in in different ways um, and it's ultimately it ultimately like just doesn't give me the same effect as as it had before so i just decided to cut it cut it loose you know cut my losses with it so right now i've i've only been smoking molly and occasionally some weed what kind of effect does the molly give you um i'm i'm not even gonna lie to you it's a beautiful feeling um, it, I feel like, I feel really motivated to hustle when I, when I start smoking, like, like it pushes me to like, it pushes me to go get money, like, but constantly. So it's good and bad, but like, you know, I, I feel like. I'm calm on it. I, I I don't I don't go crazy or like anything like that. But um, especially when I you know put the weed with it, it kind of mellows it mellows me. So it's like a balance. It's not like super strong. When you think of never using drugs again, are you how do you feel about that? Do you does it is it something you feel like you can let go? Yeah, I think I think it's a day by day process. And I have to keep on thinking of it like that, like, because if I, you know, think about it like I'm swallowing the cookie whole, like, it's, it, it's gonna feel impossible or, like, unattainable. And, um, I know in my mind that it's, 
it's possible and that I'm I'm capable of of doing of doing it. So you can find that same energy and motivation and sobriety. Especially when I when I'm around like, you know, people of that type of mindset, I feel like it's gonna be easier, you know, in a different like, in a completely different environment, far away from this. So I mean I I I'll be glad to have a reprieve and, and not you know not have to not have to be stuck somewhere that's that's you know taking my life away from me. It happened it it, it happened really um, quickly when I talked to them about it. They put in that application for me and um, through the, the idea exchange. Through the idea exchange, yeah, they've been a, a blessing in God's end. Like um, they're they're a program that exchanges needles. Um, I don't I don't use needles anymore, but they help with other things too like they they have uh services and resources as far as uh, you know if you want to if you want to get into a shelter or treatment they'll help you with that and um they also do like you know testing like hiv testing hep c testing std testing all of that they give out free condoms I, I like it because whenever I go, it's like I'm another person there that they don't they don't look at me like I'm disgusting or like because I'm an addict like that I don't I'm not deserving of having you know having a person to talk to or you know having normalcy like they treat me like a regular person you know and they they you know ask me how I'm doing and I don't know I just I I feel at peace when I'm over there um and and they're they're always super like super kind and helpful you probably want to get out of this area right yeah I I, I wanted to go as far as possible um now now mind you I I'm definitely gonna come back and visit but on a basis of living here probably not the safest for me um, I want to move to, you know, somewhere where I can succeed, you know, like that I can have opportunities to grow and I, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I, I feel like I have spent about like, you know, 10 plus years here. And it's time, it's time to move forward with my life, you know, it's time to get out and experience, experience the world and experience life again, because I haven't been experienced life, this is not life. <laughs> Even though I, I love, I love Overtown, the people in it, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like ne the negativity out, outweighs the, the positive, the good people, it, it's just like, there's there's a lot of bad over here that it just it it makes it, it gives it a bad name, you know. But in my heart, yeah, I'll always I'll always I'll always love town. I'd like to capture as many experiences that you've been through over the years. Um, you know, being in Overtown for ten years and, and, and I haven't been in over Overtown for ten years. I've been in Miami for about ten years. Okay. Yeah. It, I've been in town for like maybe two years. Where were you before? Little Havana. Okay, the whole time. No, I like I've 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 been in a lot of cities like moves place to place. I stayed in Alpata, in North Miami. Boca. Um, yeah, in Boca too. Any anything that you would feel comfortable or be willing to share from your your life before you know you close this chapter? I can't I can't think of anything specific, but I I definitely want to brainstorm on that. Okay. You know I mean, um, like I we had talk we had a talk about the hypnosis. 
about like there there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of periods of time at least out here where I've just like I've numbed out so much and I've like completely blocked out blocks and periods of time where I just for the life of me I can't I can't remember certain things, certain people, certain places, things that things that have happened, you know, people have actually come up to me and, oh, you remember this? And I'm like, no. Like, I really don't. And, um, I really, like, I, I want, I want to know. I, 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 I don't want to block it out no more. So, I, I'm, I'm gonna try hypnosis and see where, see where it goes. Um, and also, you know, do more research and, and see if there's other things that I can um, do to bring some of that memory back. Um, I love I, I love suggestions too. I, I was gonna say um, any feedback really that you have for me. What about even since the last video? Is there anything even just between then and now? Yeah, um, there was an incident. There was an incident in the park that happened. Um, I was in a position where I had been up for like days, like going on a week, and I was I was exhausted. And you can just tell by looking at me that I was like I was starting to nod off on, on myself. And like I said, I don't do opiates, so like I was really tired. And um, I went to go smoke with a couple people in the park and I just caught, you know, didn't even break open my supply. I, I was using like, you know, what I had left over from earlier on and the dude who I was, one of the dudes that I was with, um, older dude, he, he peeped that I was I was really tired. He was like, yo, you know, you need sleep. You should go lay down. And um, I'm like, I, I was I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because I, I couldn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't like, you know, that red flag wasn't going off in my head because what was going off in my head was that I was exhausted. Like, I, I wasn't thinking about anything else. And uh, he had, he had brought me into a, a place somewhere else in the park and set up like a little spot for me to rest my head for a while. I woke up to one of my friends saying, why are your clothes like that? I looked down and like my, my whole outfit's rearranged, my shorts and my thong are off my ass. And he's right He's laying right next to me with his pants down too. And um still sleep. Like I, I just I'm like like I, I was dumbfounded because I when I went to sleep he was not next to me. Like and I would have never I would have never been okay with that. Like like Especially being out of it like I was, like I would have never been okay with that. And um, took he took all my drugs, like he like it was just a really fucked up situation. So after my sister who walked up had confronted him, um, I had I had took his wallet so that I could give my boyfriend at the time his ID because I wanted to make sure he knew what he looked like. And when we came back to the park, he had vanished and he hasn't been back there since. So off rip, I know that he was in the wrong and he, you know, he did what he did. But um, yeah, I, I think he knows better than to come back around. And over town, like that's that happens it. on a regular basis. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, I. I mean, I'm. I feel in, in that area. I feel fortunate that like I haven't gone through that 
more than I have because there's only a select few times that I can remember, at least in the overtown, that uh, I haven't like like that's that that time sticks out the most. I can't I can't really think of any other time off the top of my head. Like and I would remember something like that. Like Where do you sleep at night, like as of late? Um, I sleep in different places. I don't sleep outside no more. I I I won't. So even if I have to push myself past the point of exhaustion and do certain things to keep myself awake, like drink coffee or like, you know, stay around people who are, who I trust and that are, you know, keep conversation with me, like uh, keep myself busy and stuff. Other than that, I'll stay, I'll stay at a friend's house, you know, or yeah, that's really it. And, And how have you been making money these days? Same way, same way as I usually do. Like I just haven't, I haven't been going on dates like, like I was before. I like to, you know, do different things so I'm not putting myself at risk or my freedom at risk. But um, yeah, I, I honestly like if I'm able to make money doing something, then I'll I'll put my mind to it and. and go and go for it they like the possibilities are endless I whenever I like you know come up on something like I'll try to make the most of it to where I can like further it so I can profit even more from it you know and use it to my benefit like um I don't know I had just like I I, I fuck with boosters because I'm a booster myself so when I see, you know, something something that I want, like, if it's a good price, then I'll cop it because at the end of the day, I'm not f- paying full price for it. But um, I come up on these, like, really thick markers and uh, super excited about it. Like, um, but I'm probably, I'm probably going to use those to make signs and go panhandle. But, um, like, just different stuff. Like, I, I don't, I don't. Just do one thing, cause I feel like there's a lot of ways to make money. It, it's it, it's just it's about that time to get off the streets. You feel me? Because I feel fortunate enough to have made it this far, and I've I've been doing a lot of crazy shit. You know that. You know a lot of a lot of other people don't have the you know don't have the gratitude to to make it through. And I'm still here, you know, I'm still surviving and I'm, you know, I'm growing from it. I'm I'm doing the exact opposite of, you know, living in pain. I don't want to live in pain no more, so. You can use what you've been through to make the world a better place. Right. That's what I hope to do, at least. First, I want to say, if there's any questions that you want me um, to answer, um leave them in the comments and i'll get to those on the next video um i think that would be a kind of kind of a cool you know cool topic for a video you know um i i want to i i love reading y'all's comments it 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 brings me a lot of happiness so um i did just that and i wanted to make a couple shout outs to a few people that touched my heart so the first one i'm doing is from katarina lil jada 9926 um she said wisdom is priceless what a humble human being yeah wisdom and humility are both beautiful things and i hope to gain more of it throughout throughout my life and along the ride on my journey um yeah the um second shout out i have is now hopefully i don't butcher this but konak um it says ariel if you see this i hope you know that you are valued um you deserve love and happiness just like anyone else. 
I'm sorry that as a child there was no one there to protect you and give you the love and care you needed. Now, first of all, I needed to hear all that, you know. Um, that really helped me a lot, especially, you know, what you said about what I went through. Um, just to know that someone cares enough to sit down and, and, and really, like, you know, tell me that I'm valued. Like, I really appreciate that. It touched my heart. Um, and then it says, um... Uh, Hopefully someone can reach out to you now and help you move your life in the right direction. I wish you the best of luck, take care, and maybe someday soon someone will help you get your life on the right path and you'll get to look back and be proud of yourself for where you are. Prayers and hugs to you. Well, first I want to say that being proud of yourself is probably the most important thing. Um, that's the ideal place I want to be is, you know, being proud of the achievements I made in life and how much I've grown um, because I'm a survivor. And also, I want to say, if there's anyone I have to thank, it would probably be Eric because, you know, I, I don't think I would have gone out on a limb and, and videotaped myself or, like, you know, just, just stepped out there and... and and share this kind of stuff without motivation and and someone who is willing to take the time and and does that on on a frequent basis tries and and besides that it allows the viewers to understand why we are the way that we are so there could be less judgment and you know less of people looking down because they just don't they just don't have any idea of why why we do what we do and and where it all comes from you know it, it all comes from trauma and pain you know of some sort so i just i, I just want to say i appreciate you reaching other addicts and and help viewers you know gain a better understanding of addiction and last but not least, I have to thank my viewers too because all all your support and from different parts of the country, it's so crazy. Like world, world, world. I mean, it's like I I had to do the the translation on on the comments, but it it's very it's very inspiring and touching because y'all really like you know sat down and took the time to, you know, comment uh, among watching the video and, and felt felt something for it. So, um, I appreciate y'all's support and I want to hear more from you guys and keep you, I'll keep you updated so you can know, you know, what's going on with me and my journey. But yeah, I just want to say thank you guys and it's been awesome. I think we covered everything. Yeah. Yeah, but y'all, y'all will be hearing from me soon. Like, as soon as, as soon as I get in the program, I'm gonna find some way, whether it be on a, on a um, visit. Like, you know, they do weekend visits, and you can come, and we can do another one. And, but I really, I really do um, have plans to put that channel in motion. So. Well, thank you so much, not only for sharing your story with me the first time, and uh, I'm so glad I, I ran into you. Yeah, me too. Um, again, I had kept my eye out. There's this a reason, whole time. though. There's there's a reason. I feel like things don't just happen. I feel the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like I met you for a reason, and I feel like I'm doing this for a reason, and yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, to see and you're you. you're also getting a lot of support too. Like I I think. I, I was saying that it was really cool because you going to that exchange, I feel like is gonna open a lot of doors too because you're gonna be able to see more addicts and like, you know, and get more videos out there. And also like, you know, you're getting the recognition you deserve because it's like, you're you're the one that started all of this. Even though we, we have our stories, you started it. So like the fact that 
the doctors, you know, wanted me to, it is a really cool thing. And I'm glad that, I'm glad that they, you know, they went out of their way to, you know. I'm glad that you asked me to go there yesterday. Yeah, I didn't, I really didn't think that it was going to turn out the way that it did, but I'm glad that it did. Well, yeah, so thank you so You're much. You're a very popular person. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. So, until the next video. All right. Thank you. Bye.